All right. Well, good Saturday morning. We do want to welcome in our Facebook audience. Also, we have our live audience here. Some of you just heard me finish up a call that we were doing um, over in Slovenia and France. Uh, some, of you got, some of you caught the tail end of that call. Uh, we are going to have an incredible training call today. We have Mr. Daryl Roberts in the house. We have uh, Mr. Ryan Vanderpool. Of course, uh, Daryl and I, uh, along with uh, David Hart and Miss Adela Hart. Happy birthday, Miss Adela Hart. Uh, we just got back from the big travel symposium, uh, the big travel show they do in Las Vegas every year. Uh, and it is a massive, massive travel show. Although I'm trying to grab my slides here. So uh, give me one second. I'm just grabbing the, the, the training slides while I'm uh, talking here. But uh, it is a big, massive show that they do there um, in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, every single year. Um, and if you ever get to go to the show, uh, it's, it's massive. It's at the Mandalay Bay. Uh, it's acres and acres and acres. I mean, it goes on. I mean, you, you know, could spend three days and not make it through the entire show. Um, and it's every travel uh vendor you can imagine i mean every single vendor um every single country um every single city i mean as you would as you would like you know travel or as you would like go through the uh display or go through the convention center there um you could be walking down the aisle and say oh my gosh there are the people from louisville kentucky uh there are the people by the way from boston and when you went to boston they actually had clam chowder soup uh, that they had you know brought in along with the, the lobster rolls and all kinds of other stuff. If you went over to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, they were handing out old fashions. So it's, it's a, obviously Kentucky's famous for their bourbon. And so they, they had brought bourbon in that was made from Kentucky. And of course you could go get an old fashioned. Um, if you went over to Idaho, they had things that were unique to Idaho. Um, and of course they had, again, every city in the United States, every uh, state, they had every resort, every, you name it. Right. Uh, and so it's pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, we were a big hit at the show. Uh, we were there for multiple days uh, describing our model to people uh, and looking, obviously, for new potential vendors, new potential places, new potential locations, um, you know, the boutique hotels, you name it. Uh, obviously, incredible show. Uh, of course, Gina and I were uh, lucky enough to fly over with Miss Dave and Adela Hart. Uh, we flew out of the private terminal, uh, flew over on a private jet. Uh, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> so, like, okay, I could get used to this. <laughs> when are we going again, right? I mean, with this kind of... Uh, uh, this kind of treatment. So anyway, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and so uh, the show was, uh, again, a big hit uh, for the company. Uh, lots of brand new contacts, lots of brand new potential vendors. Uh, the thing I think that blew me away the most is I actually sat uh, with people from the Ritz-Carlton. I sat with people from uh, the Marriott, people from uh, other places. And as I described our model, Daryl, uh, they were blown away. They're like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. I mean, I mean, literally people at some of the biggest hotel chains in the world. Uh, people who are part of, you know, uh, the, the travel space globally. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I suppose like uh, I was also was with the Marriott people. There were three different ladies there uh, that I was talking to at the same time. And they were like, oh, my gosh, that sounds incredible. It's like they were ready to sign up there on the spot. Um, and like just like what an unbelievable idea. And, and I share that with you to help you understand that, again, we are doing things in travel that have never, ever been done before. Uh, there's not another company out there. You say, ah, you're just like this company. Over here. No, that's not true. There's nobody out there like us. And sometimes I, I spend a lot of time, I think, trying to help people understand the gravity of the moment. Because I know that we're in our 10th year, which is fantastic. I mean, obviously, you're 10 years old. Uh, you've been paying out millions of dollars in commissions all around the globe. You're obviously a rock solid company that's not going anywhere. Um, you pay the commissions on time, every time, beautiful home office, customer service, and multiple languages, and all those other kind of things. And that tells you that the company's stable, that there's stability, right? That the uh, the management team knows what they're doing, and all those other kind of things. That All that's true. But I want you to just understand the history of the company, uh, because we did not figure out what I call the secret sauce until November of 2019. That's right, four months before the global pandemic. And when we figured out that secret sauce, it was the world tour that we did in Cancun. Again, it was the end of November, 2019. And understand that we were on a world tour and you could not apply points. I'm gonna say that again. You could not apply points. That feature didn't exist yet. So we had the getaways where you could apply points, but we just kind of did two world tours that year. One was a cruise. And then when the big one was in November in Cancun, and it was absolutely out of this world. But it was a trip that you just had to pay cash for. You couldn't apply any of your monthly points toward that. 
I mean, that's how new the idea was. And that's four months before the pandemic. Now, obviously, as I've mentioned countless times, the company almost doubled in size during the pandemic, uh, which tells you, you clearly got the secret sauce. When you can grow a travel company in a dynamic way, grow a travel company with dynamic sales in the middle of a global pandemic, clearly you're doing something that people really, really like. But again, we didn't even figure out the sauce, right? Uh, you know, that's good, you know, that, that thing, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you guys are putting on the chicken, but they're lining up to get it. We didn't have that uh, until four months before the pandemic. Well, we began to grow during the pandemic. And part of a world tour is not just about the place and the price. Part of it's bringing people together uh, from all over the world for this incredible experience. And understand that we were doing that. But the first one we did, I remember, Daryl, we were at the Wynn. We were talking about that. So we were at a place called the Wynn. It was October 2nd, the year 2000. Um, and of course, it was out of this world. I mean, we were there for $66 per night. Understand that the Wynn, one of the nicest hotels in the entire world, goes for over $600 per night. We're there for 66 And although we're there in this incredible place, and although we're there with the panoramic room view, um, you know, the, the, the windows go from the floor all the way to the ceiling. In fact, when you walk into the hotel room, you push one button, and not only do the lights come on, but the shears and the drapes rip open like it's the opening night of some great production. And you got the windows from the floor to the ceiling. And out those windows, you have the entire Las Vegas Strip. All of the lights, the hustle, the bustle, the mountains that surround all of Las Vegas is spectacular. And so all that we're in this amazing place and we're there for this amazing price. We still couldn't do the full world tour. Why? Because of the pandemic. So people were there. I remember Daryl and Maria being there and Demond and uh, Jamal and a lot of other great people, right? But it was like, hey, how you doing? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get too close, right? I mean, you know, because it was the pandemic. And so you didn't have what we have today where people are hugging each other and we're doing the trainings and bringing people together and meet so-and-so and meet so -and -so. That did not exist until this year. And so we didn't even figure this whole thing out until November of 2019, four months for the pandemic. And we didn't even get to kind of do the real benefit of a world tour until literally this year. And the first training that we did this year uh, didn't happen until uh, New Orleans, which was July. I mean, so we've been doing the real thing that we've been talking about doing since July of this year. <laughs> That's how old this company is. When you think about this company, in your mind, the real birth date of this company was the New Orleans event, followed by the event in France, followed by the event in Cancun, followed by the event we're going to do next month in uh, Hawaii, uh, November 15th, where Dale and Marie are going to be there. Uh, that is the birth date of our company, the real birth date. And again, if you are a student of business, if you're a student of history, um, you could go read about countless companies. I mean, the, the family that started McDonald's, they started off as a, a movie theater business on the East Coast. Now, was that the birth of McDonald's? No, no. They're doing movie theaters, not hamburgers. They cut out to the West Coast. They start selling hot dogs. Does McDonald's sell hot dogs? No, they do not. So they're doing hot dogs. And then eventually that fails. Then they do drive-in barbecue. Does McDonald's do drive-in barbecue? Now, some might say, hey, they did have the big rib for a while. Yeah, well, they don't today. And so anyway, they did drive-in barbecue. And then eventually they did hamburgers. And then after they did hamburgers, it was another seven years before they had their first uh, franchise. It took them 19 years to figure out the special sauce. Now, would you say, well, no, hey, nope, I'm 19 years too late because uh, if I could have been here back when they had a drive-in movie theater, no, no. You would say from the first franchise, that was the moment moving forward. Well, Starbucks, I mean, they were 16 years old and only has 17 stores. And the reason I put a big emphasis on this, and I bring it up again and again, it's so important to realize where you sit on the map. You are here at the very beginning. You are here at the very genesis, the very commencement. The top income earners have not even heard about the company yet. The top income earners are not Ambassador Deborah Taylor. It's not Daryl and Maria Roberts. It's not Pastor Mel Keys and Dr. Phyllis Terry. It's not Camila Peraza and when uh, and Karina, uh, it's not all of the other you know, people, Ryan Vanderpool, all the ambassadors we have in the company. It's not Sabrina. It's not Lily. It's not all the uh, ambassadors you know, from Sandra that we have over in France. No, the top income 
have not even heard of the company yet. We are that new at the very beginning. So I begin our training call with that because I think if you know that, uh, it, you work with a different sense of, um, uh, of urgency, right? It's not a, a matter of urgency. It's a full-blown emergency. Um, and you can see that be true. If you look at the activities of, of most of our ambassadors, you know, Daryl and Maria have never worked harder. They've been here for five, six years. They have never worked harder than they're working now. They've never been more focused than they're working now. Uh, Gina and I, this year, I think we're up to 39 people that we've enrolled this year. Now, keep in mind, this is not our first rodeo. I mean, we've been here since the year 2013. So we've been here for a moment. We joined, by the way, in June of 2013. We are in our 10th year. I, people know that I'm in Trevorium, right? I mean, 10 years later, people know, and yet we still sponsor 39 uh, we'll probably end up with the year somewhere around, you know, closer to 50, right? We are still sponsoring people on a regular basis, right? We're going out there telling people why, because we just figured out the secret sauce. But it's like we're at the very beginning, the very genesis of this entire thing that we're about to do. And for that matter, we just opened up these countries last week, Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya, Kazakhstan, India. A lot of you guys came on and you heard the end of my presentation uh, that I was doing for Olga and Smile, and Smile's in France. Olga's in Slovenia. And of course, she's part of Tatiana's group, which has spread you know, to Kazakhstan and all these other kind of places, right? Uh, for a while, if you heard them speaking, they were speaking in uh, Russian or Ukraine, um, you know, going back and forth, right? I mean, so again, we are just getting started. There's over a billion people in India. You know how many reps we have in India? Exactly like zero to one. You know how many one-star directors we have in India? Zero. You know how many directors we have? People have gotten three, zero. There's a billion plus people there, right? Yeah, you're 10 years. No, we're just getting started, right? And so for all of you, I hope that you guys kind of feel that sense of urgency. You feel that sense of, uh, of excitement, that adrenaline, like, man, I am at the very, very, very beginning. And then furthermore, because we were at the travel show uh, and we were a smash hit of the show uh, and we were talking to countless people and describing our model, and to see their fascination. And I've tried to, again, share this with people. It's almost unthinkable that nobody's ever done uh, what we are doing before. And uh, when you consider that most people, they dream of traveling. It's the single largest industry in the world for a reason. It's the one thing everybody wants to do. I mean, I still love when I you know, tell people, tell me about your bucket list, you know, the before I die, right? Three very important words, before I die, here are the things that I want to do in life. These are their dreams. So how come you haven't done them? Well, I can't afford it. You'll hear that again and again. I can't afford it. And no one ever thought to say, you know what? We're not only going to help you save money on travel. We're going to allow you to earn your travel. And that's what people are doing. When you get your three, you know, you're paying us, but we're paying you. When you bring on three customers, you have to do the work. To get three. Now, is it hard to do? It's only three. But you have to do the work. And if you do the work of bringing us three customers, you have now earned your membership. And your membership comes with how many vacations per year? If you're a platinum member, three. You have enough points for a, a getaway and a world tour or two getaways and two world tours. And you got the free trip incentive. You have three vacations per year that you have now earned because you're earning more than you're spending. The membership is no longer costing you money. And it's unbelievable that no one has ever come along and said, you know what, we should allow people to earn their travel. I mean, this is the one thing they sit around thinking about, dreaming about, moms and dads. I mean, again, we're talking, I'm not talking about a couple thousand. We're talking about a few hundred million people this moment, right? There's 7 billion people on this planet. Most of them want to travel. But I mean, just this very moment, there's a few hundred million people today that are dreaming, man, if we could go to Disney or if we could do this or if we could do that, how incredible would that be? And you're sitting here with the golden ticket. You got the ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. They just never heard of it, right? And part of it's you kind of like realizing what you have and going out there boldly, right? Going out there, you know, audaciously and sharing with the world what we have. And I understand that not everyone's going to get it at first. Most people are not early adopters, right? I mean, most people are not going to be want to be the first to jump on anything. 
lot of people want to be the cool kid, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know all of it. They don't. I mean, they're just waiting to see when enough other people are doing it. Then they're Johnny come lately, right? They want to jump on the the the, the you know the the, tra- you know, the train. They want to jump on the the bandwagon, as they say. And so again, you are pioneers. I salute you. You are entrepreneurs. Better yet, you're travel preneurs out there making this thing happen, blazing the path for others to follow. But understand, we have a path that people are in fact going to follow. And today, and when we do these training calls, it's about helping you maximize your opportunity here at Trevorium. What are the things that you can do that could take you to the next level? What are the things that you can do that guarantee your success? What are the things that you can do that can build a financial wall around your family that nothing can penetrate? Now, with that very long forward, that very long prologue, uh, I do want to bring in two guys that can help you do that unequivocally. Uh, the first is uh, Mr. Daryl Roberts. Uh, we have uh, dubbed him uh, MJ, uh, Michael Jordan. He is the Michael Jordan of our industry. One of the greatest trainers, one of the greatest articulators you're ever going to meet. Uh, we were obviously very lucky and blessed to spend, obviously, the last few days in Las Vegas with him and Maria uh, as we went to the travel show and just incredible dinners and uh, just magic moments. It's always incredible. Um, and Daryl is a seven-figure earner, uh, as is Maria in this space. Uh, they've been doing it for over 30 plus years. And so for 30 plus years, they've never had to wake up and, and go to a J-O-B. They never had to wake up to an alarm. Ah, 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 right? They don't do that, right? They wake up when they're done sleeping. And so for 30 plus years, uh, they have been top producers in this space. Uh, we've also got Mr. Ryan Vanderpool here today. Uh, this is a gentleman, by the way, who's built a team of over 30,000 people in his past. So I keep making the joke. He's starting to get good at this thing. Uh, by the way, we also happen to have here today, uh, Ms. Mahmuda. Uh, she came on at the end of my presentation that I was doing in Slovenia. Uh, that's part of uh, Ryan's team. And she came on and uh, said hi to Smile and Olga and kind of told her story. So always appreciate when Mahmoud is in the house. But hey, Daryl, uh, Ryan, uh, welcome. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Unbelievable. By the way, happy birthday, Mr. Della Hart. Yes. How about that one, huh? Yes, yes. 29 again. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's Sammy Hagar's birthday today, too. Sammy Hagar. Well, by the way, according to my Facebook it's Angel Lewis's birthday, and I actually sang Angel, happy birthday. Uh, and then she goes, uh, it's not my birthday. <laughs> my birthday is November 23rd. I go, you need to inform Facebook. Facebook <laughs> tell everyone today is your birthday. <laughs> Mr. Daryl, how are you today, my friend? Hey, unbelievable. Todd, th- this is about your millionth training. And, and, and if I didn't know that, if I didn't know any better, it'd be like, this, this first 15, 20 minutes or so, it'd be like, it was your very first one today. The energy that you brought, <laughs> explaining and articulating the information of our company, where we are uh, and, and why we're where we are, et cetera. Dude, I'm telling you, it was it was giving people goosebumps. I know for me, it was, it was the, I, I just couldn't believe it. It was like your first training or second training. It was no. unbelievable. So, um, uh, again, just just excited to be here. This past week, uh, the last three days or so with you guys was unbelievable. Uh, at that place with all the countries that were there, all the the hotels and literally from all over the world uh, uh, were there in lots of different cities there. Uh, for me, it was like uh, as if I was a kid in a candy store. You know, it was prospects just everywhere. You just you know, you get that ADHD and you just don't know what to do. And then you just settle down and you get into your rhythm. But man, that was the most fun thing um, I've done here out in Vegas in the last and for a little while. But it was just so amazing to be around so many people that like what we do, see the vision and value of what we do. And if we can get everybody on this call, this Zoom, whether you're live or whether you are or listen to the recording to just get that understanding. And Todd did such a great job, you know, letting you guys know we are here at the right place at the right time. You just have to learn how to prospect and do it on a consistent basis. And just like that event we were at this weekend, guys, there's events like that, uh, maybe not from a travel perspective, but there's an event like that where there's thousands and tens of thousands of people literally every single uh, week and you just got to learn to tap into it and once you learn that uh, trick I'm telling you your life 
is going to change. So hopefully today we impart some more information that will make a huge difference in your life, but it's uh, it's up to you. You just, just got to do it. You've got to draw a line in the sand and say, it's my turn. I'm going to prospect. I know there's going to be some good ones. There's going to be some bad ones. There's going to be some that say yes. There's going to be a lot to say no uh, that say yes a year from now. And you just have to stay the course and focus. And once you do that, I'm telling you, life is going to get better. You know, that last thing you just said right there, Daryl, um, you know, that story um, can be found in the Bible. Uh, and so I do a lot of obviously analogies uh, to how they grew the, the Christian church. Uh, if you think about Jesus's ministry, he went out and recruited 12 and says, I got to teach you to be the fisher of men. Uh, and so they went house to house, town to town, told the story, got rejected. You know, Jesus taught them how to deal with rejection. Um, you know, one dropped out, even happened to Jesus. And from there, they built the single largest organization in the world. And so if you're a student of big organizations, you cannot ignore uh, the biggest organization ever built, which was built from 12 very simple, they were fishermen. Uh, these were not sophisticated people. And so again, if you go back and you read the account, what Daryl just mentioned a moment ago, on uh, the first day of the Christian church, you can read about this in the book of Acts. Um, they said that there was a multitude of people and they gave this very straightforward, sincere presentation. And afterwards, there was a variety of reactions. You know, some people mocked and laughed. Now, why would anybody mock and laugh? Very straightforward, sincere presentation. And the best we can figure is that they were the mockers and the laughers. Uh -huh. now, some were perplexed. Now, why would anybody be perplexed? I mean, a very sincere, straightforward presentation, right? The best we can figure out is that they are the perplexed, right? And here's what's important to note. They did not stick around to straighten this stuff out. And they didn't try to, you know, unperplex the perplexed. That could be perplexing. Instead, they collected the believers, 3,000. <laughs> there are not a lot of first days, but never 3,000, right? <laughs> 3,000 people said, yes, uh, we believe, and we want to become part of your uh, organization, part of your movement, we want to become Christians. And then from there, they went on and told the story somewhere else. And so again, what Daryl just described is as old as time that you go out there, you share what we're doing. Not everybody's going to see it today. It's about finding people when the moment's right for them. And if you're really you know, doing servant leadership, it should be about them. If I'm calling Ryan saying, Ryan, Ryan, you got to join, you got to join, you got to join. And the timing is not right for Ryan. That's not servant leadership. That's about me. I'm trying to get Ryan to join for my purposes, not because it's best for Ryan. And when you're doing true servant leadership, it's more about when the timing's right for them. And that timing's different for everybody. Uh, you know, Dale and Maria, we talked to them a long time about our company before they were able to come on board. Why? They were in a different place. They had different things going on. Uh, the timing was not quite right. Uh, Danny Seguilon was here uh, for over a year before we ever did anything. The timing wasn't right. Cynthia Sly was here for two years before she did anything. The timing was not right. Ryan Vanderpool on the screen was here for over a year uh, before he went on that trip with us last year to Cancun. And then, of course, that's when the moment, you know, the light bulb, the moment, everything kind of lined up. Uh, Ryan goes out and becomes an ambassador in the next eight months. And congratulations to you, Ryan, uh, because obviously because of your dedication, uh, Ryan worked uh, at the car dealership as an executive. He has to drive an hour and a half to work, an hour and a half home from work. That's three hours a day. He works 10 hours a day, six days a week. So that's 13 hours a day. Uh, that Ryan works. Now they pay him a heck of a lot of money, but still 13 hours a day of your life is gone. Got this amazing life, but he had to call his wife, Tammy, honey, how's our lifestyle, right? Cause I'm an hour and a half away from that lifestyle. And Ryan, because he decided to uh, work with our business, which was specifically designed. Is that correct, Daryl? Yeah. It was specifically there designed for people with no money, specifically designed with people with no contacts, specifically designed with people with no time. That's Ryan. He had no time, but calling a few people on the way to work, calling a few people on the way home from work, calling a few people after work and just the flexible hours of his day, 10 minutes here, five minutes there, 10 minutes later, right? Eight months, he goes from zero to ambassador. So now he's making over a hundred thousand dollars per year with our company, which allowed him to make a pretty bold move. And he went in and said, look, I can't do this drive anymore. I'm done. I'm done. It ain't happening anymore. I am done. And so Ryan has regained three hours of his day officially as of yesterday. So Ryan, congratulations to you. Hey, buddy, I appreciate it. And uh, there's so many great lessons in that story alone. And, 
and their and their personal lessons. Um, and Trevorium is the reason that all of this happened. It was the personal lessons that happened along the way. And, you know, we talk about a year ago, but we were still doing stuff way before that for a year. And as a matter of fact, Daryl, I'll tell you a story about believing something into existence. Probably about two years ago, I'm having conversations with Todd and Todd's like, Ryan, what are the chances that if you just told your boss that, you know what, I just can't do this drive anymore, that he might say, well, why don't you work from home? You know, why don't, why don't you, you know, only work three days a week rather than six days a week? And I thought, yeah, that's all great, but I run the store. I got to be there, you know, blah, 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 right? We started to believe this stuff into existence two years ago. And it's really, really ironic because when I told the dealership I was leaving, the question was why? And the answer was easy. I'm over the drive. Well, what if, Ryan, you could work from home more often? It comes right out of the owner's mouth. Uh -huh. Like, what if you don't have to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday anymore? And oh, by the way, every other week we'll give you Tuesday off and you can work from home there as well. Just amazing the, how thought becomes reality. Now, in the end, the reality was, honestly, I wasn't looking for less days to drive to work. I was looking for the last day I had to drive to work, at least to that place. My drive now, seven minutes to work. I can show up when I want. It's ironic because I was thinking about it this morning. And if this was last week and I was working, I would have had to been up by seven. I would have had to been on the road by eight to make sure I was right here with you guys at nine o'clock. I'm at home. Am I going in today? I don't know if you can read the shirt. That's the new shirt to make you look like you at GMC. And, um, and I am going to finish the call and now I'll stroll my way into work to deliver my first vehicle to a customer at the new place. So, and we believed it into existence, which comes to some of the training and the two things that I'm thinking about that I'd love for people to write down if they could. Number one is find a reason, find your reason. And, and the reason might not be, hey, I need a reason today to talk to more people. I want you to find a reason why you're here. Find the reason what gets you going with the company. My reason outside of the time was, and Todd and I talked about this all the time, and you might want to write this one down as well. And that is because I wrote it down and I literally live it every day these days. And Todd and I talk about it all the time. And that is do more of what you like and less of what you don't like. And if that's your job, if that's um, things in your life that are going on that, that kind of paralyze you, Learn saying. and work on doing more that you like and less that you don't like. And that was really my story over the last two years, let alone the last year. And I made a decision. I don't want to drive anymore. So I'm going to do more of what I like, which is not driving home. And excuse me, I'm going to do less of what I don't like and more of what I do like, which is being home and working with this great company and having an extra 13 hours a week to do things like this. So just some things to think about. I'm sure we'll wrap back around with this thing. I can tell you that travel, I wrote this down while you were talking, Daryl, travel helps remind you how great life can be. Sure. Think about that one for a minute. Travel helps remind you of how great life can be. We all go, all go on these trips. We all come back home and we engage. Just remember at all times how great travel is. And it is now your lifestyle for the rest of your LIFE, you, your family, the friends, and the ones you love. So specifically, Daryl, this business is built for each one of us, specifically for each one of us and whoever we are and whatever we're doing in our lives, we just need to find the reason and then go down that route. So now I feel like I'm uh, at church on Sunday. You're trying to follow the, uh, the choir director or the person singing. You talked about, you got to have your reasons, know your reasons. So 
instead of reasons, you can say, know your why, the exact same thing. So I was just trying to help you out to, to bring that point home. But if you don't have a reason, if you don't have a why, ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to happen. I want everybody that's watching today, you know, just before Ryan talked, I was in Todd and we all were talking about, you know, it's going to take time right in there, it's going to take time. Now, guys, that could be a, a week or two. It could be a month or two. It could be a year or two. But the thing you've got to understand, it's going to take time. No matter how you feel about these trips, no matter how many trips you go on and, and enjoy yourself, reshuffle the deck, come back, you know, energized and engaged for your family, for yourself, for your community, for your work, whatever the case may be. How many got that point? Because we say it all the time. And sometimes I think people miss the point and I know Todd really belabored on it this morning is that it's going to take time Todd it took over two years to get Marie and I in the business because we were doing other things and what if you guys would have quit and obviously you weren't going to do that because that's not the way you and uh, uh, David uh, actually work. But again, it, it takes people time. You told the story about Ryan. So how many of you understand it's going to take time? But even if it took you five years to get to ambassador, if you, and I'm talking about once you had a game plan, you were serious, you were following it, and it took you five years to get to ambassador, would it be worth it? You know, there's people that work for 40 years. Ryan, you can speak to this, that that try to have a retirement and they're still looking at Social Security. So they're working for 40, 45 years and still don't have enough money to retire. And if you would apply yourself, plug in, do the things we talk about, take the notes, understand that. I'm still looking to see who, who wrote down there. It's going to take me time. It's going to take me effort. If you know that, say that so that you can start erasing some of the things that, that cause you issues. Um, Todd talked about McDonald's earlier today and what it what it took to get them off the ground, where they started and then where they are today. He talks about um, uh, Starbucks, you know, how it took like 17 years for them to get 16 stores, something in, in, in that area. And now they have 50,000 stores out there. That is not anything, you know, just for our company. That's just part of life. A baby that's born is not going to be running uh, in, in the first few weeks, in the first few months, in, in the first year, year and a half. It's going to take time and development. You have to strengthen those muscles. And that's what we've done over the years. We've strengthened certain muscles to get us in business muscles, to get us to where we are today. And that's what we want you guys to understand. It's going to take time. You're going to have to work out. You're going to have to do the things that we talk about and build up on those things. And that's one of the biggest bugaboos for people is that we want it now. How come those five people didn't sign up that we talked to yesterday? You know, how, how come they didn't call me back? How come we didn't get in touch with them? How come they didn't follow back up with me? How come they didn't want to get that $9.99 package, the travel pack? How come they don't want to go to Hawaii? You know, those are questions we all deal with, but you have to understand that successful people understand that challenges happen. Successful people understand that there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be issues. The, the challenges with successful people, we get over them earlier. Now, I'm, I remember back in the day that I used to be upset when somebody said no or somebody told me they were going to show up at the presentation. And I'm walking back and forth, looking at the parking lot. We used to go into the parking lot meetings and I used to just be looking there, looking at my clock. And used to get upset until I learned over time that that was going to happen. And then I learned that challenges happen for regular folks, successful folks, for everybody. You as a successful person have to learn to get over the issues quicker and get back on task to do the things that you need to do. But Ryan's absolutely right. You've got to have a reason. And if you don't have a reason, you're not going to make it in anything you do. Yeah, and they just say reasons come before answers. You know, you know, you know, show me the why, and you know, the why comes before the how, right? If you have the why, you'll figure out the how. Um, and and for everyone out there, I think that the reason what Ryan and Daryl just said is so important is that if you're new, and a lot of you are, in fact, most of you are, are, are new to our space, you're new to our industry, you're new to our company, and it would be easy to think that if you went out there and you talk, well, I talked to Daryl, I talked to Maria, I talked to Ryan, I talked to Danny. Uh, they didn't jump on it. It must be not a good of an idea and quit, right? Because you don't know that, no, it takes time. And so one of the reasons that we're on here trying to convey the story, uh, and when you hear, you know, Ambassador Deborah Taylor's story, 
um, and, and you understand what it took for her to get to where she's at, you can realize, okay, wow, this happens to everybody, right? This happens to everybody that, you know, they, they tell people and they don't jump on or they're skeptical of this or they're that, or you know, when you start making money or this or this or this and come back and talk to me. And again, this is all just human nature stuff. The same things that are happening to you are happening to Daryl, are happening to Maria, are happening to Ryan, are happening to me, are happening to Danny, are happening uh, to Ambassador Deborah Taylor, are happening to Dr. Phyllis Terry and all the other great leaders in our company, Thomas Flowers and Renithia and on, on and on and on. All those same things are happening. But some of us are able to interpret what happens differently only because we have more experience. When you realize that that's just the way it is, that it's human nature, that people, they quit and they don't, and they do this, they do that, and it might take them a year to take off. When you kind of understand that better, then you can be more even keel, right? Because part of our business is controlling that emotional roller coaster, right? You know, one day you're high as a kite. This is unbelievable. The next day someone says no and you're down in the dirt, you're depressed, right? And part of it's trying to control that emotional roller coaster, the entrepreneurial roller coaster. Everybody goes through it. Nobody's exempt. You know, Ryan or Daryl goes through it. Ryan goes through it. Other than if you've been on the roller coaster enough, right? You just get a little better, like, okay, yeah, we go up the thing and then we go way down, but it's okay. You know, we'll go around the curve. And I mean, you just get a little more used to that it's okay, that this is normal, that uh, this is all human nature kind of a stuff. Now, even as I do all my analogies to the, the biblical account of how they, uh, they built the, that organization, I think this is what people realize. I mean, people, by the way, one of the famous stories I share with people, if you go to John uh, chapter six, verse 66, uh, this is the dreaded 666, right? But in John uh, chapter six, verse 66, you can read about Jesus's top 72 people that all quit on him. I mean, they, they all quit. I mean, he looked at the 12 and says, are you going to quit me too? And so if you have somebody quit, you can go like, wow, I mean, they, they quit Jesus. If they quit Jesus, don't be surprised if they quit you. Or if it takes someone a while to get going, Jesus's own brother, James, uh, did not uh, become a follower until after uh, you know the, the resurrection, right? So Again, it took him forever to get his own brother going. So don't be surprised if it takes a while for you to get your brother going. Understand that it's it's the same and it's just human nature. So sometimes we share the stories so that you can kind of extrapolate from that what's happening in your business, that it's not unusual for you to share with somebody and they don't jump on it. It's not unusual for someone to uh, join and maybe not do anything. They're just not doing anything yet. They've not joined yet, right? Maybe the timing's not right yet. The key is for you to be here long enough that one. two years later, when oh, Daryl Maria yeah. said, you know what, the timing's right, we want to join, that you're still here. <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many times that that's happened, that mm -hmm. somebody else told somebody about the business, and then two years later, they want to join, but the original person who told them is no longer here. And so now they got to join with somebody else. You did the work, right? You went out and cultivated the field. You removed the trees. You dug the trench. You planted the seed. But then you didn't stick around long enough for the harvest. You decided to go plant another field. And you just keep going from field to field to field, always so doing the work, but never getting the actual harvest because you didn't stick around long enough. And that's what we talk about, stick and stay to get your pay. Hey, Daryl, I know you got some great slides, so I'm going to let you roll with that stuff. No, the slide, I'm just following you guys. If I have a slide that, like, for example, I put a slide up here. It was, was uh, close to what we were just talking about. But go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. By the way, for those that don't know, Daryl, you and I would know probably better than anybody, the amount of effort that Todd puts in every month to prospect, the amount of effort you put in to prospect every month. Todd, if I was to give you a number of the amount of people that you prospect, and it's not one-time prospecting, some of these people, you've been prospecting for two, three, five, seven, nine. 10 years, but never took it personally, never took them off their list, never took them off your list because they said no. And that's that understanding. And, and by the way, I don't know that there's anybody that's had some no's like you've had, like, I mean, like the worst no's I've ever heard. And you just turned the no into fascination. You almost played played games with them after that in a very friendly kind way but like last month just the number of prospects you touched last month so everybody really knows by the way does todd need to know do this no you know why todd does it because he's learned to love 
to do it. He found the reason, found the why, and in his life now, he loves to do it. He loves the challenge of helping people, the challenge of being successful. And the biggest one of them all is he's a do it first leader. Do as I do, as well as I say. And that yeah. is Todd Strand. Well, I think it comes back to, it's not so much that it's about me or, you know, that I'm some big deal or something like that. I think it more comes back to like interpretation. Um, how do you interpret what's happening to you? What's the story you tell about yourself? Meaning uh, there's a famous story about these, these two kids and their father was an alcoholic. He was abusive. He beat his, uh, their mother, his wife, he beat them. I could never hold down a job and all those other kind of things. And the one brother, he became an alcoholic and abusive and, he beat his wife and he beat his kids and he can hold down a job. And they said, how'd you turn out this way? He goes, well, how could I not turn out this way? Did you not know my father? And then the other kid, he never drank ever. Uh, he had this incredible family. He treated like you cannot even imagine, had a, had a great job and all these other kind of things. Like, well, how did you turn out this way? How could I not turn out this way? Did you not know my father? Right. And so they both had the exact same experience, but how they interpreted that experience was different. Well, the same is true. When you go back to prospecting, you know, again, how do you interpret what's happening? And so you have to understand when people, someone says no, they're not saying no. They're saying not now, right? They're saying not now, not no. And when they say no or not now, it's not about you. It's about them. It's not about because it's not, well, you know, Ryan, if you were better, I'd join you. No, it's about them. It's about them and their timing. So as, as an example, uh, we have a very dear friend, you, uh, all three of us. Uh, her name is uh, Amber. And we've known Amber since, well, Ryan, you've known Amber longer than I have. I've known her since 98. You go back and known her since 94, 92, whenever that was. And Amber is like fantastic. I mean, she was made for this business. The moment you meet her, you're like, oh my gosh, she was made. I could bring her on right now. She could be here less than 60 seconds. You say she was made for this business. I mean, she's just got this bubbly, unbelievable personality. She's the life of the party anywhere she goes you meet her within two seconds you just want to hug her i mean she's just like, oh my gosh you're saying I mean, she's just kind of like she's just wonderful right well the timing was just never right we've been talking to her for years we've been prospecting her ryan for 10 years since the year 2013 i've been talking to amber about this business and amber joined last week last week 10 years later right and so when you understand that again it's all about timing. It's about their timing, right? These are you know, the stories of Ryan and Daryl. Those are just stories from years ago. Amber joined last week, 10 years later uh, that we've been doing this company. And so again, it's about them, their timing. It's about how you interpret it. When you go out and you invite somebody to become a part of this company. And if you want to really become successful, you got to have, you got to be talking to three to five people a day. There's just no getting around that, right? That's kind of where the rubber hits the road. And most people get into what I call creative avoidance. You know, well, I want to get on the training call. Ryan, Daryl, those are great guys. Hey, by the way, go me wrong. Being on this training call is very, very important. But nothing substitutes talking to three to five people a day. And a lot of us find, well, I, I need to understand the comp plan better. I'm going to go build this funnel. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to uh, design the perfect business card. I'm going to be, you're doing all these things other than actually doing the one thing that you're supposed to be doing, which is talking to three to five people every day. And if you're talking to three to five people every day, you are extending an invitation to them, right? Where they can learn how to travel for less. They can learn how to travel for free. That in itself is life-changing, right? And then obviously they can make money. And whatever amount of money, that's also life-changing. You are extending an invitation to them to change your life. And the more you learn about our business, the more you get that. And I get that when you're new. It may not feel that way. When you're new, man, I just want to get my three so bad, man. I want, I want to get somebody. I want to sign them up, right? And I get that, right? I mean, because you want to, you know, because you want to get to the three and rank advance of the comp plan. But when you've been here longer, you, you'll realize a little bit better what you're really doing. You are extending an invitation to a person to change your life. You're asking them, hey, do you want to come join this incredible global community of people, of like-minded people, of people like Ryan and Daryl and Dr. Phyllis Terry and Renithia and, uh, you know, Ambassador Deborah Taylor, people like Mahmuda and Samantha Galler, people just like you, uh, people that are trying to improve their lives. They're trying to improve their skill set. Uh, they're reading the books. They're trying to grow, uh, develop. Uh, they're trying to become, you know, more mature, more, uh, again, better human beings in every shape or way. They're trying to build businesses and make money and 
uh, you know, and, 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 and do better in that arena. Uh, they want to travel the world and have fun, right? You're enjoying people to join a global community of people like Kayla Young, uh, of, you know, people just like her. Um, and these are people that are improving their skill set every way, shape, or form. You're in, sending an invitation to people to come join this community of people that are going to help you, support you, encourage you to become the best version of yourself. You're in, sending an invitation to people to change their life. That's the invitation. And it's no different than the waiter or waitress who walks around the restaurant and says, would you like to see a dessert menu? Would you like some coffee? Would you like to see a dessert menu? Would you like some coffee? Would you like to see a dessert menu? Would you like some coffee? It's not personal. You have to learn to marry yourself to the process and divorce yourself from the result. Again, marry yourself to the process and divorce yourself from the result. And if you do it over and over and over and over, you get better. And you just like Daryl's son, Aaron, he's got video of the first time he was batting. And his stance is wrong and his hands were wrong. And he was you know, looking all kind of goofy in the box. And I mean, he couldn't hit the side of a barn. And of course, he's now got video of the kid. I mean, he doesn't matter how good they are. He can knock it out of the park. Why? Because he kept doing it again and again and again. He got better. And all of you can get better. And as you extend that invitation to people, right? And you learn to follow up professionally. Now, what does it mean to learn to follow up professionally? You can't just call Amber back every week and say, Amber, do you want to join yet? Do you want to join yet? Can I send you my sign up link? Do, hey, do you think are you thinking about signing up? Hey, can I get you to join? I mean, no, she's not going to take your phone call, right? She's like, hey, all right, uh, no longer on the friends list, right? Instead, you have to follow up and say, Amber, how are you? Amber, what's going on in your life? Amber, I mean, Merry Christmas. Amber, happy Thanksgiving. Amber, happy birthday. Be a human being first and a marketer second. And as you follow up with people in a professional way, and following up is just saying happy birthday. Following up is saying happy Thanksgiving. Following up is saying happy Labor Day, happy Memorial Day, happy Sweethearts Day, happy Valentine's Day, happy whatever it happens to be. There's a day for every day of the year. A happy Teacher's Day. A happy, I mean, there's, every time you turn around, they got these different days that they've invented that you can send something out to somebody and say happy whatever day that it is. Um, and uh, this is just learning to follow up. Now, you can drip on some people. We just got back from the Vegas show. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. Hey, we were just in Cancun the week before that. It was amazing. We were just in Europe before that. That was incredible. Hey, I just had a lady from my uh, business in Australia. Congratulations, Angel Lewis, uh, that she just signed up. I mean, you can drip on people, little tidbits of information. You can drip on people, some articles about how travel's booming and this and this and this. You can drip on people that, hey my gosh, if the recession comes, more people than ever are going to be looking for a side hustle. If the recession comes, more people than ever are going to be looking yeah. for uh, ways to save money on travel. Uh, so that's professional follow-up. That's dripping, dripping, dripping. And it's just that invitation to change your life. So um, anyway, I appreciate the comments, Ryan. But uh, again, guys, this is the stuff. You're not just trying to sign people up. You're extending an invitation for someone to change their life. You're learning how to become a professional. But I want to go back to Amber again. You know, guys, it took him 10 years to get Amber another challenge. So hopefully you wrote that down and all the stuff that we've talked about today, you're, you're aggregating it and you're going to go through. This will be a great um, uh, video recording that you will be up that you can actually follow. But let's let's just pull back the layer, just the onions, just a little bit more on Amber. There was. Did we lose Daryl Ryan? Yeah, I don't hear Daryl. I don't hear your volume. Yeah, for a moment I thought it was me. I'm like, did I just lose everybody? I just, I just go off. He was on a roll. I didn't want to interrupt, thinking I would. Yeah. Me. me either. Uh, I thought there we are. Dude, you guys give me that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much so. We both thought it was us, not you. Well, everything was frozen on my screen. I'm like, why is everything frozen? I mean, I have a bad connection. I'm like, I'm looking around. Then you went on. I'm like, oh my God, did I just get disconnected altogether? I'm like, and then he said, I heard Ryan like clear his throat. I'm like, okay, I'm still connected. <laughs> so, 
I forgot. It's, it's amazing. Hey, oh, the, the real quick is, you know, what Todd just was talking about with Amber, I want to go back and, you know, peel the layer back just one more second on Amber. Uh, obviously, Todd took 10 years before, obviously, he got her signed up and in, into the business. But another part to the Amber story that uh, a lot of people make this mistake, and we talk about this all, all the time. time, all the time, is so guess what? So I get this phone call, which I get lots of them from Todd. And he says, hey, Daryl, I want you to say hi to Amber. Would you tell her what you and Marie are doing? Tell her what you think about the company, what's been happening. Can you share your story? So we were actually on the phone. Todd does three ways with people. And some of you that are brand new in the industry or you know, a year or two in the industry and you haven't gotten where you want to go, you're not doing that. So not only does it take time and some people are not going to get in right in a minute, but some of you are not using the tools and that's one of the best ones. You know, Ryan has an amazing story. You've got a corporate person, a guy that that is just driving hours. I find out who Ryan is. I, I find out through Todd how to get his phone number. You know, other people that you hear on these calls and are these Zoom, you want to find out who they are because you want to utilize them. But I, I'll say it again. And, and again, I, I like the guy in the wilderness just, you know, screaming. But if you are not doing three ways or if you're only doing them with one or two people or most times one, some are doing it zero, you're missing the point. You're trying to build this on your own. It's like you, uh, you're a lumberjack and you've got an ax and you never take the time to sharpen that ax to make your job easier. You're working against yourself. You know, when you want to sign somebody up or you've got a person in the process and I, I just put together Marie and I, seven steps for a couple brand new people. And before we're done, I'm going to show you because there's a couple people, Todd, that that uh, are really busy and don't have a lot of time. And I say, hey, well, this business is uh, specifically designed for you. And I said, I'm gonna put something together that I, I do for people that are very busy and successful, but don't have a lot of time and have a lot of credibility. So I'm gonna go through those seven steps at some point in time before we're done. You wanna take some notes on it or get the recording so you can go back and it might be something you can use. But back to the point, why did Todd, Todd, why did you get me on the phone and do a three-way with Amber just to, for her to hear our story? And well, because, you know, facts tell, stories sell, right? So obviously Amber's somebody that I know. You cannot be a prophet in your own land. Um, and so the more you get somebody on the phone with other people, the more they get to hear other people's stories, the more believable the whole thing becomes, the more excited they become. That's the two things. It's social proof and excitement. And again, I've literally had people, Daryl, that would call me and I, you know, I get them on the phone with each other and they talk to each other and I'm not even part of the conversation, right? I've hit the mute button. I'm over making myself a sandwich, right? I'm enjoying the fireworks. I'm enjoying the show. And when they're done talking to each other, like, my gosh, Todd, this is great. You're awesome. Glad I could help. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and I do that all the time. It's like, I don't say anything magical. I just get people on the phone with other people. And they do all the work, right? And right. so it's learning to do the three-way call that's paramount. So again, guys, that is one area that most people are missing because again, if you get a new person and you don't do that with them, guess what? They're not going to do that with their people and they're going to be missing out. So if you can do that, it'll make a big difference. If it's uncomfortable in the beginning, everything is uncomfortable. You just have to learn how to be uh, uh, comfortable on it. Uh, Jeff Meyer, I want to throw his name out there for a couple of things that we've been talking about uh, today. You know, we, uh, Jeff had a, a good friend of his, finally got a chance to connect with them. He'd been working on this guy, you know, for months and months and months, maybe even over a year, and finally got the guy out to his ranch out there in, in Colorado. And um, Jeff showed him the information, got excited. Well, we did a three-way. So he got me on the phone. We did a three-way. We're talking with him. The three-way turned into a Zoom. And I said, okay, let's grab Todd. Next thing you know, Todd and I both were on a Zoom with this guy. Now, this guy has the potential to be the number one income earner in the company. I mean, the potential is definitely there. But a couple of things to that story, Jeff was following the process that we talk about. No, number number two, that, that, that was incredible. You have to do that long term. Number two, what we talked about earlier, 
Jeff texted me back immediately after the call was very positive and very successful. And he said, Daryl, I am so glad that I didn't quit because he was on the verge of quitting multiple times because he, he, he would call and say, well, Daryl, you know, why aren't people signing up? This is the most amazing product and service out there. And Jeff uses it. He goes all over the place for the 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 rate of um, the rodeo, and and uh, he uses our service and, and saves you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars per trip, maybe even thousands of dollars. And he's just wondering, Daryl, why, why, why? Well, we've answered some of those questions. But if you keep going, if you keep doing the things that we're talking about today and every Saturday. You're going to get that one that sees it, the one that literally can knock it out of the park. And those are just some of the things. So for Jeff, again, I just want to, you know, applaud you today for doing what you're doing and, and staying the course and, and following through the system. If you do it over and over and you follow it correctly, guys, your, your life definitely is going to change. But you got to follow it. You can't pick and choose what you do. In other words, if you, you've got a Betty Crocker recipe, I used to say this way back in the day, and it asked for two eggs and it asked for flour and brown sugar and all of that stuff. And you decide, well, no, I'm not going to use any flour today because I just don't think the flour is going to be good. I'm just not comfortable putting flour in there. And it says the two eggs, but then I love eggs, man. I especially scrambled eggs. So I'm going to scramble seven eggs and then I'm just going to put the eggs in there once they get scrambled. How do you think the cake is going to come out? <laughs> it's not going to come out. Follow the recipe. It's simple. Share the product, share the opportunity, build for events, self-improve. If you did those four things every day, share product, share opportunity, build for events, self-improve, share the product, share the opportunity, build for events, self-improve. Guys, you know how good you would get in the next 90 days? You know what would happen to you in the next six months? Can you imagine in two years how powerful you would be and how good you would be in the success that you would attract to yourself? But people pick and choose some of the things I'm going to do. Well, today I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to read the uh, uh, 10 pages of a good book. I'm not going to listen to any audios today. I mean, I'm just going to take the day up. Those are the things that will hurt you and keep you wondering why I'm not successful. And guys, these are easy things to do, but they're obviously easy not to do as well. You know, Daryl, um, as you're talking about uh, Jeff, and I get it, and I'm looking at the people that are participating, the people that are on the line today, and I'm going through the names there. And one thing I always tell my leadership and my team is you're one person away from a great explosion. And I learned that from one of the greatest networkers in the history of the industry. Uh, he worked with Art Williams, one of our, you know, one of our mentors and all of that stuff. Hubert Humphrey was his name, Hubert Humphrey. You're one person away from a great explosion. And there are people, I see Kayla Young on here. Kayla is one person away from ambassador. She's, she's way over. She's one person away from ambassador. I got Tony Bowman down here, Todd. Tony Bowman is in here today in the house. TD, TD. <laughs> TD, TB, one away. There are so many people I'm looking on this list and I'm not going to call them all out, but they're one person away from their life changing forever. And it's back to what you said, Daryl. You just can't quit. You just can't quit. Jeff, you just can't quit. Guess what? He didn't. And it is on like Donkey Kong for him now. So you just got to believe that's why we're here. Everything we're doing right now today, every time we get on one of these calls or pick up a three-way is because we believe that everybody is one person away. And if we can get them across that finish line, that makes our life more meaningful than any dollar that goes into our bank account. Look who just showed up, you guys. I know he's been here, but he is live and in person now. Yeah, have, happy birthday to Adela, Mr. David yeah. Hart. Yeah, happy hey. birthday. I've been here the whole time. What a great training call. Yeah. Great job saw, right now. Good yeah, school. thank you. Yeah. Life is going to open up a lot for this man right here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Back yeah, home. That's very good. Seven minute drive to work. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate nice. it. Great to see you. Welcome back. Yeah, what a great call today. All, all the uh, wisdom um, that you guys shared with people today on the call. I was thinking in the background going, if I, if I was building the business from a partnership point of view, 
I would number one, always be taking notes. Even if you've heard it before, it's always good to write it down and um, just make sure that it's put in your memory banks the entire time. Like, oh my gosh, we've been listening to this, I'm listening to this. All the information that you guys shared was just great. And it is, it is the building blocks to be successful uh, in business and be successful in your Trevorian business. So um, great job today. Um, I was thinking the other part, if I was on the business, if I'm a partner in the business and I'm listening in, I'm texting everybody I can in the middle of the call going, you got to get on, even if they hear the last 30 minutes. And then I make it a mental note. Hey, next Saturday, I need to make sure that I'm planning ahead to have my team on the call because part of being successful is how we promote people to the next event. Daryl, you, you related to that a little bit earlier too. Yeah. So uh, I grew up in the network marketing space with all three of these guys, uh, everybody. And uh, I have to tell you that they are uh, the best of the best. And, um, you know, they could charge big time dollars for what you guys heard today. People pay big time dollars to hear the information that you heard today. And these three deliver it like nobody can deliver it. And they do it personable too. So, um, you know, from a company perspective, I would just share with you 2023 is looking. We're excited about 2023 and the uh, world tour developments. We had a phenomenal week in Las Vegas. Um, we've got some uh, nice, well, we have some incredible world tours coming up for you. Uh, one in particular at a Ritz Carlton that I'm excited to be able to, uh, it's, it's, I didn't even know this little island existed, Amelia Island. Uh, up by Florida. Um, that's going to be an incredible trip, uh, world tour to go on. Um, we've got lots of stuff going on over in Europe. Uh, one of my bucket lists is uh, in Prague, and uh, we'll see that come to fruition here in 2023. And then, of course, a lot of the great destinations that we currently have are going to be part of the, uh, the world tour um, plan. Because uh, we know that a lot of people still want to go to places that they haven't been to um, and or their upline, crossline, or a video that they saw on stories.trevorian.com uh, just move them to want to make sure that they use their travel points uh, in 2023 on those. So on top of that, I can tell you from a, a company perspective in terms of bookings of getaways, um, the last two months have been world i guess world what am i trying to say um top sales or highest sales usage uh getaways uh since the existence of our business and uh, so that we know that we're getting a lot of uh a usage uh, out of the getaways since we enhance the uh eight the uh, feed the art the feed that comes into our software and we added all those uh, um, getaways uh, to the platform so lots of great things happening in terms of the world of travel here at Trevorium and pe people being able to take advantage of rates that you can't find around anywhere else in the world. And then, of course, experiences that you get to create uh, with other like-minded people. And then finally, the opportunity to make money. You know, we live in a, a time and a, and a place in today's world where residual-based income is so important. Um, because when you look at how you can earn money on your money or how you can capitalize your income or leverage your own money, there's really not a lot of options out there today. Um, it's it's um, Obviously, we're at an economic downturn. And so lots of people uh, in our age group, guys in their you know, 50s and 60s and even in their 40s, they're all going, how do we... What do we do with our income? How do we get to that next level so we can create retirement type income? When you're earning a half percent in the bank account, that's not going to get it done. When inflation is moving up at a, at a pretty rapid rate and you're, so, you're looking down at Social Security, if you're, you, we know that that's not an answer. Um, but you know what an answer is? You know, telling friends about the best way in the world they can travel and create residual based income, uh, you know, becoming a two-star director, becoming a four-star director, becoming an ambassador in our company, 
and having that income that's came, that comes into your business based on not what you personally do day to day, but based on the sell of memberships that are in place, it creates volume and income in your pocket. And so you have a very powerful story to share with people. If you're here on our call or our Zoom and you're brand new, if you're here um, building a team, realize that you've got something to share with people of value, not just travel, but the ability to create residual based income. It doesn't require you to trade dollars for hours, work at nine to five. It's based on inspiring other people and showing, sharing a phenomenal product that shows people how to see the world, experience life more, and have fun. So Todd, with that, Ryan, my friend, Daryl, you guys are incredible. You guys don't know this, but I sneak on your calls all the time, listen in, take notes, and just in and awe of what a great job you guys do in the way that you communicate um, our uh, the industry, our company, um, the conviction level that you guys have in the business, it makes all the difference in the world. And it's a valuable tool, everyone, for you guys to use, not only to strengthen your own beliefs and buy into the beliefs of these gentlemen, but also to have your team on these uh, calls so they can strengthen their beliefs and their confidence level on how to be successful with Trevorium. Thanks, David. Thank yeah, and, and again, David, tell Miss Adela, uh, happy birthday. Yeah. I, I know that uh, today's the 29th, and so that's a big one. Uh, you know, next should be next should be 30. That'll be the big one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have a we have a great day set up today. It's also our uh, our grandson's birthday. Yesterday, he turned five. Yesterday, so very cool. Uh, and today is uh, Della's birthday, so we got a lot of birthday stuff going on around the house today. Yeah. I only get to wear the uh, Titleist hat today in uh, spirit. I will not be golfing. Today. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe oh. you go in the backyard, just use the putting green you put in there. So maybe yeah, I might, I might I might get a chance to do that. It's raining out here a little bit up here. I don't know if it's raining down in the in the valley, but it's raining up here. Yeah, a little, little bit. Yeah, it's kind of it's funny because we don't get much rain in Southern California. So when you get it, it's like celebrate the moment. But we get a little rain showers this afternoon. So yeah, and we need it. It's incredible. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks for coming on, Dave. So, Todd, I know we're about seven, eight minutes after the hour. We can move those seven steps that I put together for those new people that just came on board. We can move that to next week. Uh, if you want, uh, no, actually, kind of I, I, why don't we just do rapid fire of the seven steps since you brought it up? We got people here. Uh, do the rap, we're gonna let you do the rapid fire seven steps and close it out. Ryan, any final thoughts? So, you got before we have uh, Daryl do the seven steps. Every day is a great day at Trevorium, it's just it gets better and better. And it's it's not hard to be successful when you got great leadership like what you see on the call today with Daryl and David and Todd. I mean, these guys it's hard not to be successful. You just got to plug in with everybody, guys. Just do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do all of us a favor. Continue to plug in. Believe you're one away from a great explosion and allow other people's stories to help be your stories. And that's the magic to the whole situation here. It's not very complicated. You just got to be willing to do it. So that's that's where I'm going, Todd, today. That's yeah, sure. and, the only, and the only thing I would add, guys, is, is be patient with yourself. Uh, the mm -hmm. past doesn't equal the future. It doesn't matter how long you've been here. It doesn't matter how many people said no. It doesn't matter if no one's ever signed up. That doesn't matter. All that matters is you keep moving forward because eventually that is going to change. If you keep moving forward, you're going to get your one, you get your two, get your three. You're one recruit. You get a big lead that takes off. It's going to build confidence. You're going to get, you know, you're, you're going to get better as you go. As long as you keep doing it, you will arrive at some point of success. So just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And Daryl, seven steps. Take it away, my friend. Okay, real quick. Um, we're going to be in New Orleans at the end of this month. So like the 30th and the uh, 31st, rather, and the 1st. So anybody in that area, let us know. Marie and I are going to be there uh, doing some work with uh, Apostle Ace uh, Daniel Wilson. But uh, we'll have some time if you guys uh, have some folk there. So just want to shoot that out. I'm going to have Maria read this, guys. Just put this together yesterday. Uh, for uh, Coach Wright, uh, he, this guy is just killing it and uh, just really making some things happen. So these are seven steps. 
that uh, we sent to a couple of brand new people that just signed up and they're going to be working with Coach Wright and myself and Maria on this. So here we go. Step one, find the script first. Okay, so. Step one is to read the script. Okay, so step one is read the script. So Maria's going to just go step one and just kind of listen real quick. Step one is the script. Uh, you can use in these examples. Number one, hi, Bob. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Todd. I've joined a travel club and I'm able to stay at four and five star resorts for 70 to 85% off and earn an extra 2,000 to 5,000 extra per month part time. Are you open to make some ex making some extra money and having fun? If so, get back with me ASAP. Things are moving fast. Read the second one? Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna go okay. each step. So here's that's one example. Um, here's another one. Obviously, with the scripts, there's a, a bunch of different ones you can use, but here's the second one. Example. Hi, Bob. Hi, Mary. I just found a travel club where I'll save thousands of dollars every year and earn an additional two to five thousand dollars a month part time. Are you open to making some extra money and having fun? If so, get back with me ASAP. Things are moving fast. Step. Step two. If they respond positively to the text or email that you send them, get them on the phone with uh, your team leader, uh, Daryl. Well, in this case, she's going to read that for it was for me. Okay. You guys can change get it. Get back for with Daryl before you speak with them, and they'll and Daryl will ask them a couple of questions, tech, check their temperature, or move them to the next step. Or you can let them know your friend will call them within 24 hours, or you can ask them when they will have five minutes to get on a quick call to get all the details. Once you know the time, we'll call them together. Step three, if it's still positive after the call, I'll give them a six minute video, leaderintravel.com and the 10 minute money video, travelforwealth.com. I'll find out when they will commit to reviewing the two videos, total of 16 minutes, and we'll send the video at that time, not sooner. Step four, we'll follow up right after they review the videos. Example, if they say they'll watch the videos tonight at 8 p.m., I or we will call them at 8 p.m. and make sure they're ready and send the videos to them. If something has come up and they can't watch the video right then, we'll reschedule and go through the same process. It's important that we maintain control. We must create value in the process of our system. We're not sending the videos for them to watch when they can. It doesn't work well. We must create the tone and schedule it. Step five. We will let them know we'll follow up in about 20 minutes of them reviewing the video. So if they start at 8.05, we'll call them back between 8.25 and 8.30. Your job is to be excited throughout the process. Say things like, this is amazing. This is a game changer I've been looking for. I've been praying for a financial blessing like this. I didn't think I would be able to travel this well for pennies. I can't wait for you to see this. I'm so excited. Things similar to this. You must have energy in your voice. They will not understand your energy and excitement. They will not understand this at the beginning, but they will understand your energy and excitement. Smile on your face and love in your heart will get them to enroll. Step six, we will always get a yes, no, or I have lots of questions. My job is to answer any questions and move them towards a yes over time. We will never give up on people because we will never know what's going on in their life. Timing may be off now, but four months from now, it could be great. Or a year later, it might be perfect. Amber, 13, uh, 10 years later. <laughs> this process can take a few minutes, weeks, or months. If you commit long-term to Trevorium and more importantly to yourself, you will succeed. The worst thing that will happen to you is you will take amazing vacations, go to places people only dream about every year for pennies on the dollar. That's incredible. Last step, number seven. When they say, enroll me, or I want to sign up, we will repeat this process with them. Call me and let me know if you reviewed this info and you're ready to copy and paste one of the two scripts above and get started. It only take five minutes to text one of the scripts to 10 to 15 people. So in the next five days, you sent your info out to 50 to 75 people. In a month, you've reached over 200 prospects. If you email and you have a database, it will only take seconds to send to hundreds. Okay, so that's the process we're going to be working on with a couple of people. Guys, this is going to be up for those that want it uh, and can use it. Uh, will be up at learnthistraining.com. Three words, learnthistraining.com. It'll be in a document. Just go to the very bottom. And if that can help you with a process, because so many people miss different things of the process, um, this is going to keep them on focus. They both have hundreds, if not one has thousands of contacts. And this is going to be 
the the script that we're going to be following through or the method uh, that we're going to be following through. So hopefully that helps you guys out. We want to encourage you and inspire you to reach your goals. Never quit. Stay plugged in. Get excited. And if we can help you as usual, we will do so anytime we can. So later today, this evening, learnthistraining.com. That'll be there. And you can have it. Use it if you like. And God bless. Ryan, unbelievable. Todd? Incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. I got an old saying, Daryl, duplication starts the minute you prospect someone. Yeah, exactly. That's it right there. What you guys just put together is exactly what I've preached for 30 plus years. Yeah. You put it into, that's it right there. Duplication starts the minute you prospect because everyone can do exactly what you guys just said. Congrats. Thank you again for another great tool. You're welcome. Seven steps. Uh, absolutely. Awesome, guys. We'll be back tomorrow night, Sunday at six o'clock California time, nine o'clock East Coast time. All you have to do is say, hey, what are you doing tomorrow night, six o'clock California time? That might be worth a hundred grand to you this year. Anything? Didn't think so. Nothing more important than you being with me with uh, Ambassador Deborah Taylor, Pastor Mel Keys, Fireside Chat. We have our corporate update call with our CEO and founder Monday night. Uh, we have two of the very best to ever do it, Daryl Marie, on Tuesday night. Uh, we got Mr. Danny Bling Bling in the house every Thursday night. And so, guys, we have presentations throughout the week. All you have to do is plug in, do three-way calls. Do not let the day in without talking to three to five people today. Do not let the day in without reading 10 pages of a good book, 15 minutes of positive audio. And with that, we'll have a, uh, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye, everybody. See you guys. Take care.